day everyone and welcome to the orientation on the recruitment and selection guidelines for Teacher 1 of the Schools Division of Iloilo City. It is understood that the Equal Employment Opportunity Principle is strictly adhered to in the conduct of this activity. This office highly encourages all interested and qualified applicants regardless of age, gender identity, sexual orientation, civil status, disability, social status, religion, ethnicity, and political affiliations or other personal circumstances to apply. Applicants with disabilities or special needs are encouraged to inform the school screening committee or the Human Resource Management Office upon submission of application so that provisions for their needs could be facilitated. The guidelines for hiring for Teacher 1 are supported by the following issuances. Depet Order No. 7, Series of 2015, also known as Hiring Guidelines for Teacher 1 Positions, Effective School Year 2015-2016, to and Division Memorandum No. 66, Series of 2022, also known as the Recruitment and Selection Process of Teacher 1 for Kindergarten, Elementary, and Junior High School for School Year 2022-2023. These hiring guidelines can be downloaded at the following link bit.ly slash sdoic teacher one guidelines here are the composition of the screening and evaluation committees in the different levels for the division selection committee kindergarten sped and elementary level chairman mr danny clark m ukil oic assistant schools division superintendent members dr jerry m lego chief of the school governance operations division Dr. Melody Lacuesta, Education Program Supervisor Dr. Maria Teresa Tacan, Division ESP Coordinator Mr. Freddy Gallardo, Education Program Supervisor Mrs. Laila Valencia, Education Program Supervisor Dr. Eric Valenzuela, President of the Public Elementary Schools Principals Association Mrs. Ververly Alimuot, Division Federated PTA President Priscilla Escupel, Vice President of AC Iloilo City Chapter with the Secretariat, Ms. Kathleen Agnes Verval. Division Selection Committee for the Junior High School Chairman, Mr. Danny Clark M. Ukil, OIC Assistant Schools Division Superintendent Members, Mr. Arlo Villalba, Chief of the Curriculum Implementation Division Dr. Mary Regina Alconga, Education Program Supervisor Mrs. Ligaya Mutilihao, Education Program Supervisor Mr. Arnaldo Tuga, Education Program Supervisor Dr. Teresita Militar, President of the National Association of Secondary Schools of the Philippines Mrs. Beverly Alimuot, Division Federated PTA President and Ma'am Priscilla Escupel, Vice President of AC Iloilo City Chapter with the Secretariat, Ms. Christine Arigorat To assist the Division Selection Committee, there would be Division Selection Subcommittees in the different levels for elementary level, each district would be chaired by the public school's district supervisor with two elementary school heads and two master teachers as members. For kindergarten, SPED and junior high school, this would be chaired by the education program supervisor with four head teachers or master teachers as members. For the school screening committee, kindergarten, SPED and elementary level would be chaired by the school head together with four teachers, preferably master teacher or grade level chairman, as members. For junior high school, chaired by the school head with head teacher and department head and other three teachers, preferably master teachers, as members of the committee. The process of recruitment and selection started with the release of the division memorandum indicating the hiring guidelines for Teacher 1, which was released this July 13, 2022. Today, we are having the orientation of all interested applicants. All applicants should be submitted on or before July 29, 2022 and to be submitted to the school where the applicant has the intention to teach. Initial evaluation of applicants with the school screening committee will be conducted on August 1 to 2, 2022 which would check the completeness, veracity, accuracy, and the authenticity of the documents. The Division Selection Subcommittee and the Division Selection Committee will proceed with the comparative assessment of applicants on August 8 to 19, 2022, of which they will evaluate the documents and determine the points, and would evaluate the teaching demonstration, interview, and skills demonstration of the applicants. 
And lastly, the Comparative Assessment Results or the publication of the CAR RQA or the Comparative Assessment Results Registry of Qualified Applicants. The orientation of all applicants would introduce the Recruitment, Selection, and Placement Guidelines. Moreover, the required documents or means of verification shall also be explained as indicated in the Checklist of Requirement and Evaluation Sheet. All applicants are required to register to the Department's online system, which is at application.deped.gov.ph, where they must encode their personal data sheet and select the division where they want to be ranked. Once submitted, a unique application number or UAN will be issued. In the submission of application requirements, the UAN will be indicated if available. However, if you cannot access the DEPET online system, which is at application.deped.gov.ph, you can directly proceed to the next step of the submission and receipt of applications. All applicants shall submit to the school head of the elementary and or secondary school where he or she intends to apply the following documentary requirements on or before July 29, 2022. First, duly accomplished checklist of requirements which can be found in enclosure number 2 of the division memorandum. Letter of intent addressed to the school's division superintendent indicating the UAN if available. Here's the checklist of requirements for Teacher 1 new applicant. The checklist would have the first part of which the applicant would identify the school where the application documents was submitted. The date of submission. The second part would identify the name of the applicant, the unique applicant number if available, the address of the applicant specifying the street, the barangay, the city, or the municipality, then the contact details of the applicant. The third part would identify the level that the applicant would intend to teach. The fourth part is the list of the different documents required to be submitted. However, in this column, it is the applicant that would accomplish that would mark check or X whether the documents are submitted or not. Then the last column would be accomplished by the screening committee which will check the completeness, the veracity, and the authenticity of these documents. Here's the checklist of requirements for Teacher 1, old or previous applicants, of which they have the option either to retain or to update their scores. The first three parts of the form is the same. However, in the last part, there are only three required documents for those previous applicants. Still the same, they need to accomplish the third column and the last column would be accomplished by the screening committee for the verification of documents. The checklist of requirements can be downloaded at bit.ly sboic teacher app checklist. For new teacher applicants, you can download the checklist underscore teacher one underscore new file. For old or previous teacher applicants, you can download the checklist underscore teacher one underscore old file. Together with those uh, two documents, the checklist and the letter of intent, applicants should also submit the duly accomplished personal data sheet. The certified photocopy of the PRC Professional Identification Card or certification from PRC showing the teacher's name, let rating, and other information recorded in the office. A copy of the voter's ID or any proof of residency as deemed acceptable by the school screening committee. NBI clearance and the omnibus certification of authenticity and veracity of all documents submitted signed by the applicant. For education, a certified copy of transcript of records and certification from the school registrar indicating the general weighted average of the applicant. For teaching experience, copies of service records, performance rating, and school clearance for those with teaching experience. If unavailable, the applicant must submit a justification citing the reasons for unavailability. Performance rating and school clearance may not be submitted, but for those with experience, service record is a requirement. For LET rating, 
certified photocopy of ratings obtained in the LET or in PIBET. Trip for training and skills, certificates of specialized training, if any. For all teacher applicants who wish to retain their points in the last previous ranking, specifically in the last three school years, they are going to write a letter of intent addressed to the school's division superintendent with copy furnished to the school screening committee. Assigned points shall be incorporated in the CAR RQA upon the validation of the HRM PSB. If an applicant would like to update specific points in any criterion, he or she may be allowed, provided this is stated in writing, supported by documents, and he or she should go through the ranking process in that particular criterion. Duly accomplished checklist of requirements, photocopy of the individual score sheet or RQA shall be attached to the letter of intent to be submitted to the school head of the elementary and or secondary school where he or she intends to apply. These documents shall be enclosed in a white folder and must be properly labeled using side tabs. The cover of the folder shall bear the name of the applicant, school where the documents were submitted, and the level which he or she intends to teach. For junior high school applicants, the subject area specialization shall also be indicated. For applicants who would intend to apply and are qualified to teach for different levels, such as kindergarten and elementary, SPED and elementary, elementary and junior high school, among others, separate folders shall be submitted. Side tabbing labels should include the following Checklist Letter of intent Personal information Education Teaching experience Let or pivot And training Again, the cover should bear the name of the applicant The school where the document was submitted And the level where the applicant would intend to teach And of course, the side labels or the side tabs, which would include the different areas of the documents. Late documents shall not be accepted after the deadline, which is July 29, 2022, unless these are required and authorized by the HRM PSB for further validation. The applicant assumes full responsibility and accountability for the authenticity and veracity of the documents submitted, as evidenced by the omnibus sworn statement duly signed by the applicant. Any false and fraudulent documents submitted shall be grounds for disqualification. The in initial evaluation of applicants would be conducted by the school screening committee who will receive and verify again the completeness, veracity, accuracy, and authenticity of the documents. The school screening committee shall forward to the HRM PSB the consolidated list of applicants together with the documents on or before August 2 of 2022. Then, we will proceed with a comparative assessment of applicants using the criteria as indicated in Deputy Order No. 7, Series of 2015 which would include education, teaching experience, LET or PIBET rating, specialized training and skills, interview, demonstration teaching, and communication skills with the respective maximum points to a total of 100 points. For elementary and junior high school, the HRM PSB through the Division Selection Subcommittee shall inform the applicants of their schedule for demonstration teaching, interview, and skills demonstration. The Division Selection Subcommittee shall evaluate the applicants' teaching demonstration, interview, and skills demonstration using the rubrics provided by Deputy Order No. 7, Series of 2015. For those who would like to have their skills demonstration in their ICT skills, this shall be facilitated and assisted by the Division Information Technology Officer and the ICT Coordinators. The School Management Monitoring and Evaluation Section 
or the Division Testing Coordinator shall inform the applicants of their schedule for the English Proficiency Test to be administered by the Bureau of Education Assessment. Each applicant shall be given an opportunity to ask questions and seek clarifications on the results of their individual assessment and acknowledge receipt of their individual results. Upon receipt of the individual results, applicants shall affix their signature on their individual evaluation sheet, of which this would serve as the acknowledgement that the applicant has undergone the application and assessment process based on the guidelines and that the results of the individual assessment have been discussed with the concerned applicant. The Division HRMPSB or the Division Selection Committee will prepare and submit to the school's division superintendent the duly signed Comparative Assessment Result Registry of Qualified Applicants or CAR RQA. The cut-off score to be included in the CAR RQA is 70 points. The CAR RQA for teachers is intended for a specific school year and shall be valid only for the duration of the school year for which it was prepared. It shall be utilized in filling up of positions that are created or vacated in the middle of the school year, provided that the Division HRMPSB shall reconvene to deliberate and update the CAR RQA by identifying the candidates who were already appointed, which means this RQA will only be used for 2022 and 2023 school year. And any vacancy within the school year, the CAR RQA will be used to place teacher applicants in the position. A copy of the CAR RQA in which candidates are listed in alphabetical order shall be posted in at least three conspicuous places in the division office and the school's concern for a period of at least 10 calendar days. Here's the timeline for the recruitment and selection process. The organization of the screening and selection committees was already conducted last July 14 to 15. Submission of application letter with supporting documents have started last July 18 and will end on July 29, 2022. The HRMPSB had their meeting last July 19, 2022, while the Division Subcommittee meeting also conducted last uh, July 19, 2022. Today, we're having the virtual orientation of all interested applicants, and by July 2022, we will have the orientation of the school's selection committee. Initial evaluation of documents by the school screening committee will be on August 1, 2022, and the consolidated list of applicants together with the documents will be submitted on August 2, 2022 to the Division Selection Committee. Demonstration teaching, interview, and skills demonstration will be on August 8 to 12, 2022. English proficiency test schedule will be announced after the verification and of course the data provided by the Bureau of Education Assessment. Comparative assessment and evaluation of documents would be on August 15 to 19, 2022. Preparation of the CAR RQA is on the following week, and hopefully we can release the CAR RQA by August 29 or even earlier than that. Publication of the CAR RQA will be from August 29 to September 8 of 2022. Let us take a look at the evaluation and selection criteria for Teacher 1 as indicated in Deputy Order Number 7, Series of 2015. There are seven criteria which are Education, Experience, Let or Pivot Rating, Specialized Training and Skills, Interview, Demonstration Teaching, Communication Skills, and of which on the screen you can see the maximum points that you can get in every criteria. That's a total of 100 points. For education, all applicants shall be rated in terms of their academic achievement. This is a maximum of 20 points. For applicants with non-education degrees, they shall be rated using their GWA in their baccalaureate degrees and their GWA in their education professional units. If the school issues a certification of GWA with a corresponding percentage rating that does not conform 
to the table provided by Deputy Order Number 7, the committee shall refer to the grading system of the school. For schools with unique grading systems, a corresponding transmutation shall be constructed. From the percentage rating of the applicant, this would be converted into the GWA. For example, if the percentage rating is 94, the GWA is equivalent to 1.4. Then, from the GWA, we can now identify the equivalent points. Just like the previous example of 1.4 GWA, the applicant would have 15.60 points for education. For those applicants with a master's degree, they will be given plus one point. Applicants with master's degree and a doctorate degree, they are given plus two points. For teaching experience, which would include early childhood, elementary, secondary, tertiary, higher education, SPED, alternative learning system, technical vocational education and training, or TVET, and culture-based education programs for indigenous people, even prior to passing the LEP. Schools and institutions should be government accredited or recognized. 1.50 points is given to every school year but shall not exceed 12 points or for every month it would be 0.15 point shall be given to the applicant looking at the logic it shows that in one school year there are only 10 months that's why we have 1.50 points for one school year example eight months of experience is equivalent to 1.20 points 10 months of experience is equal to 1.50 points. Our kindergarten volunteer teachers and those LGU-funded teachers shall merit additional points. For less than 2 years, plus 1 point. 2 to less than 5 years, plus 2 points. 5 or more years, plus 3 points. Third criteria. LET and PIVET rating, of which their LET rating would have an equivalent points. For example, if you got an 83 for your LET, that would give you 13 points. For PIVET, let's say you have 83, that would be part already of the highest rating which is 15 points, which is 82 and above. For specialized training skills, these are specialized training for skills development in the fields related to work, duties, and functions of the Teacher 1 position. A national certificate for TESDA can be accepted since these are needed for TLE courses or TLE subject offerings. However, not all NC certificates can be accepted. Some of these are not relevant and related to the work duties and functions of the Teacher 1 position. A presentation of a certificate of at least 10 days training or several certificates with a total of 10 days training would give the applicant 5 points. Below 10 days, there would be no points that can be given to the applicant. For demonstration of the skill, it's 5 points or nothing also, whether you can demonstrate the skill or not. The applicant should inform the committee what skill would be demonstrated. If the skill is related to the learning area, the Division Selection Subcommittee would evaluate the demonstration of the skill. For demonstration of the skill that would require ICT competency, this would be facilitated by the Division Information Technology Officer to be assisted by the ICT coordinators. For applicants who may be assigned to a school located in an IP community or serving IP learners, the knowledge and proficiency in the language and culture of the concerned IP community shall be validated. For interview, which would give you a maximum of 10 points that would cover professional experiences, instructional skills, technology and computer skills, classroom discipline, classroom management, 
knowledge of content and materials, planning skills, relationships with administration, staff, parents, and students, and personal qualities among others. For each of these criteria, the applicant would be evaluated from the interview. Teaching ability, which is a demonstration of the appropriate knowledge of content and pedagogy. Classroom management, of which the applicant demonstrates ability to deal effectively with negative student behavior. And school fit, a demonstration of skills and needs for the development that can be a good fit with the school. For each of those criteria, the applicants can be evaluated using the following rubrics. 5 points or exemplary, 3 points or fully acceptable, 1 point or not fully acceptable with the indicators for each of this score rating. Teaching ability would include convey ideas and information clearly, to provide reasonable examples for effective lesson planning, instructional strategies, and or student assessment. This can also include how to make content meaningful to students in the district or in the school, to have a concrete and ambitious goals for student achievement, to address the multiple and varied needs of the students, focus on achieving results with students, indicates confidence that all students should be held to high standards, and to maintain high expectations for students when confronted with setbacks, continues to focus on the student's academic success, and a reflection on successes and failures. For classroom management, this would include the accountability for classroom environment and cultures, to convey reasonable understanding of potential challenges involved in teaching and in a high-need school, to demonstrate the ability to deal effectively with negative student behavior, persist in offering viable or realistic strategies to deal with classroom management challenges, to remain productive and focused when faced with challenges. To convey willingness to try multiple strategies or something new when things change or when confronted with challenges. And to display willingness to adapt classroom management style to meet the particular needs of the culture of the school. School fit. Interaction with the interviewer in appropriate or professional manner. Having respect to the opinions of others. Recognizing the family's impact student's performance. Having strategies to create positive relationships with administrators, faculty, and students. Expresses personal and professional expectations and or preferences that are in line with the school culture. Demonstrates interest and skills that match the school's culture and needs and interacts appropriately with supervisors, colleagues, parents, and students or pupils. The number of points attained for each of these three competencies shall be added and then divided by 15. The quotient shall then be multiplied by 0.1 or 10% and the product shall then be multiplied by 100. So for example, you got a total of 9 points in the three competencies or areas. 9 divided by 15 times 0.1, then that will be multiplied to 100, then you got 6 points for interview. Next is teaching demonstration that would give the applicant a maximum of 15 points. There are six components for teaching demonstration and each of these components have subcomponents. Lesson planning and preparation, there are three subcomponents. Classroom management, two subcomponents. Teaching and learning process, five. Language proficiency, two. Assessment of learning outcomes, two and one subcomponent for reinforcement of learning. For teaching demonstration, the applicant will choose the topic or competency for his or her teaching demonstration. Each applicant is given 30 minutes for the teaching demo and to be conducted with 15 students. Since we don't have classes anymore and we are not offering limited face-to-face -face classes, Teachers will act as students for the teaching demonstration. Three copies of the lesson plan shall be submitted and the use of technology is highly encouraged. The following is the rubrics for the teaching demonstration. 
For the first component, lesson planning and preparation, this would include selecting instructional objectives. Mapping coherent instruction. For each of these subcomponents, the applicant would be evaluated for transforming 4 points, developing 2 points, emerging 2 points, and beginning 1 point with the corresponding indicators. Still on lesson planning and preparation, the third subcomponent is instructional materials, resources, and technology. Second component, classroom management. This would include managing classroom procedures and organizing physical space. Third component, teaching and learning process which would include the knowledge of the content and the pedagogy. Second subcomponent, questioning and discussion skills. Third subcomponent, students learning. Fourth, students response to activities and lastly, learning activities. Fourth component is language proficiency that would include the use of language and conveyance of information and ideas. Fifth component is assessment of learning outcomes. This would include congruence with instructional objectives, and assessing student learning. And the last component is the reinforcement of learning, which would provide opportunities to strengthen the knowledge, process, understanding, and performance of the learners. Next, we have the English communication skills, which would give the applicant a maximum of 15 points. This would be administered again by the Bureau of Education Assessment. This would include structure, written expression, and reading comprehension. A memorandum will be released pertaining to the schedule of the English proficiency test. The total percentage score obtained by the applicant shall be multiplied by the weight of 15 points. For example, percentage score is 98, that would be 0.98 to be multiplied to 15 to get 14.7 points for the English communication skills. The cutoff score for inclusion in the TAR RQA is 70 points. Separate RQAs would be prepared for kindergarten, for elementary, and for the different learning areas in the secondary. Subject area specialization for the junior high school shall be the primary consideration. As a general rule, only applicants listed in the RQA are eligible for hiring and appointment, with priority given to the bona fide residents of the barangay, municipality, city, or province in that order. This is where we apply the localization law. Priority in hiring shall be given to applicants from the barangay according to their overall rating in the RQA from highest to lowest. The same rule shall apply in the appointment of applicants from municipality, city, and province. Here's the venue for the teaching demo, skills demo, and interview. Kindergarten and SPED would be conducted at Haruan Elementary School. Applicants for District 1 or in City proper, the venue is, in, is at Iloilus Central Elementary School. Applicants for Montes Lacos or District 2, that would be on Montes 1 Elementary School. District 3 applicants, the venue is the Pas 1 ES. District 4, venue is Haru 1 ES. District 5, that would be at MV Hichanova ES. District 6, venue is Haru 2 Elementary School. District 7, Manduriao Elementary School. 
District 8, Baluarte Elementary School, and District 9, Arivalo Elementary School. The Division Selection Subcommittee would inform you of your schedule for the teaching demonstration, interview, and skills demonstration. For the Junior High School, these are the venues. For English applicants, it will be at Iloilo City National High School, the same for Filipino teacher applicants. Math applicants would have their demo, skills demo and interview at La Paz National High School. Science applicants will be at Fort San Pedro National High School. Araling Panipunan will be at Halandoni Memorial National High School, the same with TLE applicants. MAPI applicants will be at Fort San Pedro National High School. And edukasyon sa pagpapakatao teacher applicants will have their venue for teaching demonstration, skills demo, and interview at Iloilo City National High School. If you have questions, queries, or areas that you want to be clarified, please drop your questions at the link bit.ly sdoic teacher1 orientation. All the links that have been provided in these orientation videos, the link for the guidelines, for the checklist, and the link for the orientation questions would be provided on the description box of this video. Thank you everyone for joining this video orientation for the recruitment and selection of Teacher 1 for Kindergarten, Elementary, and Junior High School. Please click the subscription button and notification button so that you would be notified if there are new videos regarding orientation on recruitment, selection, and placement from the Schools Division of Illinois City Human Resource Management Personnel Selection Board. Thank you everyone and good day.